What does it mean to you receiving the BBVA Foundation Frontiers of Knowledge Award in the Information and Communication Technologies category? For me, it means a great deal. Uh, first, uh, because fuzzy logic has been somewhat controversial, and uh, some people have been and continue to be enth enthusiastic about it, and some is skeptical. So an award like that uh, has a big impact on the way fuzzy logic is viewed by the scientific community. Now, in addition to that, it has a special significance for me because I'm a great admirer of Spain and Spanish people. So this award coming from Spain has a special significance for me, and I would like to take this opportunity to express my deep appreciation to all those who were involved in one way or another in my receiving this award. And particularly, uh, I would like to mention my nominator, Professor Louis Magdalena, Director General of the European Center for Self-Computing, Professor Trias, and others. I am deeply, deeply appreciative of this award. The jury has resolved to grant you with the award for the invention and development of fuzzy sets and fuzzy logic. What brought you to create fuzzy logic? By training, I am what might be called system scientists. But I have always been a strong believer in the power of mathematics to solve all kinds of problems, no matter what field. But at some point in my intellectual development, I began to realize that mathematics, with its extremely precise conceptual framework, has a limitation when it comes to dealing with fields in which imprecision plays an important role. And that is particularly true of soft sciences, of linguistics, of philosophy, of sociology, psychology, law, and so forth. So as a system scientist then, I've been interested in the law for a long time in doing something that would narrow the gap between the real world with all of its imprecision and the precision of classical mathematics. So the concept of a fuzzy set and fuzzy logic serve to narrow that gap. How would you explain to the general public what is fuzzy logic? Well, let me start with fuzzy set. A fuzzy set is a class with unsharp boundaries, with fuzzy boundaries. And most classes in the real world are like that. The class of tall men, beautiful women, fast cars, expensive furniture, and so forth. So the classes are imprecise, unsure boundaries, but humans have a remarkable capability to reason with classes of that kind. And uh, so mathematics, classical mathematics, based on two-valued logic, is not really uh, the best uh, conceptual framework, it's a conceptual system for dealing with the imprecision of the real world. And so this was my primary motivation. What was the reaction you obtained from the scientific community when you proposed something as new as fuzzy logic? And why was that reaction better in Asia? Well, the word fuzzy has a pejorative connotation in English. When they say somebody is a fuzzy thinker, it's not a compliment. Uh, when I was writing my face paper on fuzzy sets, and, uh, and how was, I was faced with this question, how do you call classes which have unsharp boundaries? I could not think of something that sounded both accurate and good. So I was faced with the choice 
and I chose and I chose to use the term fuzzy, which he described, which I had in mind, but as I said a moment ago, does not sound good in English. And in part, this, as I expected, turned out to be a handicap when it came to acceptance of fuzzy set theory and fuzzy logic. In Asia, they do not have problems with the word fuzzy. In fact, in Japan, fuzzy is considered to be a good word. Furthermore, in those countries, uh, they, uh, those countries are old cultures. They have cultures in which they accept shades of gray between black and white. In Western cultures, which are younger cultures, there is the Cartesian tradition of black and white, right or wrong, true or false, and so forth. So primarily for these reasons, fuzzy logic and fuzzy set theory have found, have found, let's say, warm reception in Asian countries, but not initially in Western countries. How has fuzzy logic changed the way in which computers and systems work today? Is, it a, is there a way for computers to approximate to the way in which humans come up with decisions? Well, with regard to the first part of the question, uh, I cannot say that fuzzy logic, fuzzy set theory, affected the ways in which computers are used today. Uh, but when it comes to applications, the impact has been very significant. There are 280,000 papers with fuzzy in title. So fuzzy logic, fuzzy set theory uh, are playing important roles in decision making, in pattern recognition, in clustering, in all kinds of ways. For example, the camera that I looked at right now is using fuzzy logic in many different ways. Automobiles use a fuzzy logic transmission. But it's not so much a matter of how computers work, but how computers are used to develop uh, applications of that kind. Did you ever expect that your contribution would, would result in so many applications, particularly in the field of consumer engineering? And is there any application that has Spe specifically surprised you? Well, uh, when I came up with my idea, I knew right away that's going to be important. But contrary to my expectation, the initial applications were not so much in the realm of soft sciences where I thought they would be, but in the realm of hard sciences, in engineering, in technology, and particularly in consumer products. And there is one reason for it. Fuzzy logic is used in many situations to exploit tolerance for imprecision. You don't need precision, then don't use precise reasoning. Use approximate reasoning because approximate reasoning requires cheaper sensors. This is what I call fuzzy logic gambit. Consumer products do not require high precision. Rice cooker does not require high precision. But if you're talking about, uh, about satellite control, if you talk, talk about fields like that, then you do need high degree of precision, in which case fuzzy logic would not be perhaps the best system to be used in applications of that kind. The first consumer product application was 1986 shower head marketed by Matsushita. From that point on, applications grew rapidly in number. And today, stores in Japan in particular are full of products which employ fuzzy logic and sometimes in combination with neural networks. Is there any application that has specially surprised you? Well, it's not so much a matter of surprise. 
but I view one of the most significant applications to be subway system in the city of Sendai. It's a very successful system which began to operate in 1987. Work started in 1976, not long after the first applications of fuzzy logic uh, become a reality. So work continued for many years by Hitachi and Kawasaki, and subway systems are not toys. And the fact that Japan, Japanese people, Japanese scientists have been successful in building a subway system that uses fuzzy logic, I think is something that is worthy of loud applause. In what future developments do you plan to continue working in the field of fuzzy logic? I am still very active. I am pleased to say that uh, at my age, I am still active in coming up with new ideas in the realm of fuzzy logic. And right now, uh, I'm very much involved in uh, trying to develop ways of uh, reasoning involving natural languages. This is something that I have been writing about for many years right now, natural languages and fuzzy logic. And I believe that perhaps the most important application in the future will be human-machine dialogue using artificial intelligence and more particularly fuzzy logic. So this direction I view as something that's important. Technological applications, engineering applications, consumer product applications will continue to play an important role, but there will also be very important applications in the realm of medicine, medical instrumentation. One example is Ambron's blood pressure meter. Ambron has sold 120 million blood pressure meters at a total cost of $12 billion. One company, one product, $12 billion. Now to the last question. After your contribution in fuzzy logic, you have done relevant contributions in soft computing and natural language. Can you give me some more details about this? Well, as I mentioned already, uh, I think that what we do not have a good understanding of right now is natural language understanding. We have systems which have very primitive natural language understanding capabilities, we are well, but we are very far from being able to understand natural language of the kind that we use in everyday discourse and reasoning. So I feel that this particular direction is not perhaps the dominant direction today in fuzzy logic, but I believe that with the passage of time, it will become more and more important and more widely accepted. So I'm very pleased to be able to make a contribution to the extent that I can in trying to move in that direction. Yeah, don't talk. Look.